Hello and good evening, everyone. It is your good friend, Mr. Eric Norton, and I'm here tonight with my good friend, Mr. Nicholas Schleif. He is a, a very, very int- a talented artist. He showed me this Walter Payton piece, and I had to have him on the show. Nicholas, how are you doing tonight? Not bad. Uh, it's pretty good. Feeling pretty good tonight. How are you? I'm doing well, man. I I was looking over your art earlier today, man, and it's it's incredible. It's it's uh I I love that you're not tied down to one one type of uh you know you're not just sports art. You do you do celebrities. You do stuff uh, all across the board. I love that. Can you tell me a little bit about how you got started uh, uh, being a creator? Uh yeah, I started in art school, drawing and painting, and. I really kind of got bored with it. I just wanted to use as many different mediums as I could. Mm-hmm. So I basically started using all kinds of abstract stuff, like anything I could get my hands on, uh, traditional painting and drawing. I also would use like cigarette butts or um, pennies or just garbage. I once made a portrait of Ronald McDonald out of McDonald's food and packaging. Just wow. basically <laughs> anything I could get my hands on. And of course, football cards, as you see behind me. That and that's really what brought you your attention to me. You you reached out to Beckett and I saw this and I was like, man, Walter Payton is such a great story. This piece is an amazing piece. Tell me a little bit about how uh, you got approached to to do this. The okay, uh, well, uh, this the whole idea for this kind of started. Um, I have a young nephew and I gave him my football card collection as a gift. I thought, well, you know, let's get him into it. He's a little kid. I used to love it. So Mm -hmm. I gave him my cards and he started rifling through them. And I was standing back like 10 or 15 feet. And I could see as he went through, I could see different colors and shades of tone and like Mm. abstract shapes. And I was like, you know, I could make this work. I could really turn this into something. Uh, so I was like, maybe let me just not give these to you yet. <laughs> I'm like, I need these for a minute. Uh, but then I spent several months working on it, actually, selecting all the cards, going through, piecing them together. I, I basically just taped them to my wall um, mm. in my studio and kind of moved them around and shuffled them here and there to get the image. And eventually I got it to work out. It's it's a fantastic piece. Uh how, how many cards exactly are in it? Do you know? 1,128, I think. 1,128. Sure. Now, why why, why Walter Payton? I mean, and there, there's got to be a reason why you went with sweetness. I wanted, uh, like, the best all-around athlete. I mean, football's always been my sport since I was a kid. You know, it's the one mm-hmm. I'm really a fan of. And... Back in my day, Walter's career was just coming to a close when I was getting into football. Um, but he was always the man, you know. He always, I was a Vikings fan, of course, being from Minnesota, and he would always just stomp all over us. <laughs> and he even had like a lot going on off the field, you know. He had that the Walter Payton Foundation working with inner city Chicago kids. Mm-hmm. Um, he was just a really great guy, he knew how to be a role model. And he was an outstanding athlete on the field. Absolutely. He he was uh, so much fun to watch. I, unfortunately, I never saw him play. I've only seen highlights of him. But I know that he got robbed in the Super Bowl. He didn't get a touchdown there. Uh, William the Refrigerator Perry got that. So I, I commend you totally for for, for going the way of, uh, of Walter Payton. Now, uh, you said it's over 1,000 cards. Is it all the same brand of card? Uh, no, it's kind of... My childhood collection, when my brothers first got me into card collecting, it was all tops. Like, that's the only kind we bought. So this okay. is mostly tops trading cards. And then I branched out when I was like 11 or 12. I started getting into like upper deck. And there's a lot of Proline Portraits cards in here. I don't know if you remember them from 92. They had like of players in their, in their starter jackets or like hunting, doing all kinds of mm-hmm. weird stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and there's also like a, a card from every year Walter Payton played. I have his rookie card in here um, wow. all the way up through his last year. And I have record breakers and stuff like that. I even have an autographed Gale Sayers card in here somewhere. I think you, put, you put you put a, a Walter Payton rookie card in this piece? <laughs> yeah, I can show it to you. It's uh, – let me grab the camera. I have yeah, no problem. Here. I think you can probably see it, right? Yeah. There. I, 
That's awesome. And then, uh, what did I also hide in here? Oh, right up here I have uh, Walter next to his brother, Eddie. Yeah. And I put them next to each other to show how um, they were family, you know, brothers. But on the field, they were pitted against each other, like kind of like enemies or rivals, you know? It's like those right. old Civil War stories you hear about brother against brother all the, mm -hmm. on the battlefield and all that. And I always thought that was kind of an interesting thing. So I wanted to include it in the portrait. So I, I really, I know that I'm going to tone in here on the, on the Walter Payton rookie, because that's like an iconic card and you used it for art, which is really cool. I commend you for that. But do you realize like how much of a fit the collecting world is going to have right now, knowing that you used a, a Walter Payton rookie for this? This is amazing. Yeah. Um, I ruined a lot of cards making this, like they're literally glued onto plywood. So their collector value is gone. Um, mm. And there's a bunch of, I put all my valuable ones in here. There's a Phil Sims rookie. Um, I put in my Warren Moon rookie that I got autographed at Vikings training camp. I put in my Eric Dickerson rookie. There's a bunch of pretty valuable cards in here. That's pretty funny, man. I, I love that you just went the way of art. It's all for the art, so you went that way. That's amazing. Uh, we do have yep, a question. Just burn Steve, the house down, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Steve Thompson wants to know what is the uh, what are the dimensions of that piece? Like, so the full size. What 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 is the what are the dimensions of it? I'm sorry, I missed that. Uh, the dimensions of the full piece of the full layout there. How how big is it? Oh, it's seven feet tall by ten feet wide. So I made it for like a very large venue you know kind of like for a, for like a stadium or you know everything with football is so huge and even the athletes personas themselves are just so big and like gargantuan that i i thought the painting had to be a really massive scale to sort of reflect that mm -hmm. i i can understand that because if this is going to hang in a stadium or something it's got to take up a lot of wall space and it's got to be eye-popping uh, which is I'm, which is why I'm surprised you still have it. I don't know why the Bears wouldn't reach out to you and grab this up in a heartbeat. I I had it at the Bears draft party back in I want to say it was 2011. It was the year of the league strike, mm -hmm. and the Bears were interested in it, but because it was the year of the strike, you know everything was all uncertain, so they passed on it. And then we never, I guess we never touched base again on it. I should probably <laughs> reach out to them. <laughs> that might work, you know, reach out to him. But being a Vikings fan, you got to upcharge him a little bit. Uh, what's that? I said, being a Vikings fan, you should probably upcharge the Bears a little bit. Oh, yeah. Top <laughs> shelf, maybe. That <laughs> That's awesome. So I love, I love that it, you can clearly see who this is. You can make out Walter's face. Has Walter's family ever seen this? Yes, I worked with the, I'm glad you asked that. I totally forgot to mention this. Right after I finished it, I reached out to their charity, the Walter and Connie Payton Foundation. Um, and I went and they were like, oh my God, we love this. We would love to meet with you and work with you. So I packed it up, drove down to Chicago and uh, met Connie, his widow, for, for lunch. And mm. then I believe Brittany came a little later, yeah. And we were having lunch and talking about it and we decided to do a set of like uh, probably prints about like reproductions of it, probably two feet wide by a foot and a half tall, you know, smaller. And they're signed by myself and the family. And I think they still have some available on their website, Peyton34.com. If that's you want to pick cool. one up, all the proceeds go to the charity. So it's a really good cause. That uh, that's a, uh... That's a really cool thing. You know, Walter Payton has the, the the Man of the Year Award named after him in the NFL. And it's great. It's so much great stories come out from from uh, from people who are inspired by him and keep uh, working to carry on his legacy. I think it's great. This photo that I'm sharing right now of you with his family there is an absolutely amazing photo. In that moment, can you tell me how you felt standing there with them in front of your work? Oh, it was unbelievable to like have it inside Soldier Field for the Bears draft party with Connie and Brittany and Jared Payton there, like we were all together. And just having the fans come up and interact, like it was, you know, I've, I've been the role of the fan many times, but I've never been on the other side of it where the fans mm -hmm. are admiring my work. You know what I mean? Sure. To, uh, it was really to see the other side of 
football and to see it from kind of the athlete's perspective in a very, very, very small way. Um, yeah, it was really kind of cool. And to be in and to be connected to such a huge family, like, I mean, basically, you could say they're like the first family of football almost, you know? Mm hmm. Absolutely. Now, I want to switch gears here and we're going to talk about uh, the Vikings, your team, because I, I well, I don't. Can we start with the Prince piece, actually, because you did a piece for the uh, for the Vikings organization with the Prince uh, piece. Is this the actual piece that's hanging up uh, in their stadium? This piece right here? No, no, no. The, 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 the Prince piece that I have on screen. Oh, the Prince portrait. Yeah, yeah. that is a painting. It's at U.S. Bank Stadium. Um, when they built that stadium, they were looking for artwork to put into it. And I submitted my portfolio and they like, they literally called me the next day and they're like, uh, Oh wow. You're totally in. <laughs> <laughs> and so I met with the curators and everything and we were working together. And that was back in 2015 when they hired me and the stadium opened then in 2016. And that happened to be the year that Prince had died. Mm -hmm. And so, and it's kind of funny because before Prince died, I offered to do a portrait of Prince for the stadium because I'm such a huge fan of his. Mm -hmm. But they're like, no, 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 we get we got someone doing one, you know. And I'm like, ah, oh, shucks. Uh, <laughs> but then he happened to die, and they called me up, I think a month after he passed away, and asked me if I wanted to do the memorial portrait. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I had That's... Like a total meltdown on the phone. It was a little embarrassing, actually. <laughs> That's okay. Hey, we all geek out over a little over the, the the music that we love. You and I discussed that earlier. Like when I saw this, I geeked out. I was like, "This is amazing!" Is this is the cover? Uh, this is the image that they used on uh, his his triple album uh, B sides and and oh, I'll forget the name of the album now. But it's an album that I absolutely wore out as a child uh, listening to Prince. So I love uh, I love this look. This is also the picture that they used for the uh, the inside. Uh, art on the cover book uh, as well. So I, I totally dig uh, dig what you're doing here, but I want to get to the Vikings piece because that, as a Vikings fan, to have this amazing Vikings uh, piece hanging up is just crazy. Tell me about the creation process for this uh, Viking this Viking ship and how long it took you to make. Oh, that big sh uh, Which ship is it? I did two. Um, only one of them is owned by the Vikings. The other went to a fan. Okay, so um, it's the it's the one with the big sail and in, in the in the uh, Viking on the sail. Okay, and there's like that huge yellow sky in the background. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, that's the one the Vikings have. That's also in U.S. Bank Stadium, and man, that piece is really large. I mean, it's not as big <laughs> as this Peyton piece, but it's probably half the size. And that took me. They wanted it done pretty quickly because it first hung in the new TCO Performance Center, the team's headquarters. Yeah. They wanted it to hang in there and they wanted it hanging like in the main lobby when they opened the doors. So I had I had 11 weeks. So I had just shy of three months to get it done from start to finish. And oh boy, that was like 12 hour days every day <laughs> mm. working on that. But yeah, I finished it up in time even. So that was good. And brought it up to the framer in Minneapolis. And then a couple weeks later, it was hanging at the TCO Performance Center. But it was it was so hugely popular there, they wanted it where more people could see it. So they moved it to the stadium. And then I ended up doing a smaller painting to take its place. Very nice. Now, what my audience probably can't see that's not coming through on the uh, on the screen is these are this is actually all words. You, what, what are the words that, that are... Uh, that you've put on this piece here. I'm sorry, the words. Yeah, the words. Oh, it's the complete history of the uh, Vikings franchise starting in 1960 at its very conception. And then it gives like the whole history, like owners, coaches, players, like different records or games, Super Bowl appearances, even like scores and statistics. Like it's a very in depth. Uh, chronicle of the team's history on the field. That's that's insane. So I saw how you did this because I was looking through your your art, and you have it looks like it looks like a a credit card with holes punched in it. That's how you made this. Is that correct? That that's the stencil I used to make the letters. Mm. Um, 
I, I can make any letter with that stencil and I just do it with a white paint pen. And, okay. and I go through and put all the text on first to make sure I get all the words right and I don't misspell anything. And then I go back over the top of it with color. And what mm. I use for that is basically I took the, um, took the innards out of a ballpoint pen and I just tape a toothpick in there and I just like one dot at a time sit there and apply paint. Wow. Uh, I've switched gears now and I brought up a Bucks piece. Tell me who this Bucks player is because this is amazing too. The Milwaukee Bucks piece? Yes, sir. That is um, uh, the three point shooter, Ray. Ray Allen. Yes, Ray Allen. Yes. Oh, I don't know why I couldn't remember that offhand. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that was a really fun one to do, but I, I did that. Literally, I had to do that. I had to start the day after I finished that Viking ship. Um, okay. Because the Bucks Commission came up in the middle of doing that Viking ship, and they're like, we need it by such and such a date. And I'm like, ah! <laughs> so as soon as I got the ship done, I literally just dove right into that piece, started it the very next day. And then I think I cranked that one out in five weeks, maybe four, four or five weeks. I got that one done. Wow. So where's this one hanging now? Where's it at now? That is at uh, Pfizer Forum in Milwaukee. Very at nice. The, at the Buck Stadium. Very nice. That's really cool. So uh, we're about at the, the halfway mark through the show here. And every night at this point in time, I showcase a, a piece of art from my friend, Jamie Thomas, up in Canada with his legacy sp- legacy sports art spotlight so give me just a moment as i bring this next piece up on the screen and uh share a little bit about what jamie is doing here i'm gonna i'm gonna show his george brett tonight because this george brett is just an amazing sketch card that uh i want you guys all to see and let me just pull it up momentarily let you guys guys know to go to legacy use code blp 2021 and you can get yourself 10 percent off a custom uh sketch uh, that is available through Jamie, and he's he's amazing at doing it. So here's that George Brett piece. It's amazing. Look at the color. Look at the detail. Anybody who loves uh, baseball or George Brett or the Kansas City Royals, I think this is a piece that you would love to have. It is a one-on-one piece that was only available in museum collection. So uh, that is your legacy sports art spotlight tonight. Again, go over to LegacySportsArt.com. Use code BLP. 2021 and you could get yourself 10 percent off a custom sketch uh nicholas have you ever tried to do a sketch card or anything like that yeah i started with drawing um that's you know drawing is kind of the foundation for all art so i mm-hmm. i i always draw something before i make it no matter what medium i use and i mean it's really like the groundwork for all art and this is really impressive i i really wish i had a bigger screen so i could see more <laughs> detail in it yeah, Jamie is uh, a great artist. He he does some work for Tops, and he also has his Legacy Sports Art uh, line as well, where he will do a custom one of one for you. It it is an amazing. This is this is George Brett. This is a quintessential George Brett pose, staring down the pitcher, waiting on that uh, probably that that two seam fastball coming across the plate that he's about to knock out of the park. Right. <laughs> but uh, Jamie's such a great guy. I absolutely uh, love working with him. Again, guys, go to. Go to LegacySportsArt.com, use code BLP2021, and get yourself uh, 10% off your first order there. It'll be a great time to be had by all for sure. All right. I got to talk about now, uh, What like you, you said that all art starts with drawing, and then you've, you've worked your way up to, the, to, this, to what you're doing now. Between that time, like how many years is it between you, you drawing to what you're doing now and, and mastering your craft? Um, oh, geez. I started drawing really, really young. Like my parents would always lose track of me. Basically, Mm. I have two older brothers and one younger sister. And my dad always tells me about how they'd be running around the house, making all kinds of noise. And suddenly he'd be like, Oh, Jesus, where in the hell is Nick? You know, and (laughs) I'd be off in my bedroom, just sitting in the corner drawing stuff. I think I was like two or three years old when I started. Um, Mm. But then I, you know, kind of, I drew up until my teenage years early teens and then you know how the late teens are for guys and college right. it's all about girls 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 you know and the social life 
Um, so I kind of lost interest in it. But then at about 20 or 21, I got back into it pretty seriously. And that's when I decided I was going to try to make a go at it, try to make a career mm. of it. And it's working. <laughs> you're doing well. And when I say you're doing well, I mean you're doing really well. Because this next piece I want to share uh, is it's not sports related at all. So, guys, please bear with me. It's a It's a picture of the queen. And not only... Did she see it? You also received a letter back from from the Queen's people. Yes, Tell me about this. That was a huge day. Um, I had finished the portrait. I really liked it. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to write her a letter, see if she wants it as a gift. <laughs> mm. And I didn't expect to hear anything back, you know, at all. It's like, how many right. letters must that woman get in a day? It's got to be hundreds. <laughs> uh, but... And sure enough, about a month later, it wasn't that long at all, I checked my mail and I saw that that royal seal on the envelope and I was like, no way. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's I was, I was like, scared to open it. I, I didn't know like what to think or what to expect. But it was, really, it was a really thoughtful letter. She, um, she explained that uh, I can't accept gifts outside of my royal duties because obviously that would be like, it could be considered like a bribe or something. I don't know. Mm -hmm. or, you know, right. Um, but she commented on how she really liked it. She really enjoyed seeing it. And I was, it was really flattering to have some sort of correspondence with her. <laughs> that's so cool, man. That Like, that's a story that, that no one can really tell unless it actually happened to you. Like, like you have proof that it happened. I held this, like the closest thing I got to that is I once held a, like literally held a port john for Dick Cheney while, while I was in Iraq. Uh, that, that really happened, but it's not as cool as a letter from the queen. You know, it's, it's, it just doesn't work like that. So, uh, Hey man, we're in the last five minutes and every, every night we, we do the final five. It's the final five questions that I'm going to ask you tonight. And it's not going to be uh, about your art or anything like that. It's from my friends at pod deck. And I got this, uh, this, this deck of questions to ask called what the heck. And I'm just gonna pick. I'm gonna shuffle the deck, pick five cards, and we're gonna ask those five questions. Does that sound good? Right on. Let's do it. All right. Let me shuffle one more it. time. Let's get into it. Here we go. Uh, what the heck? Questions. These are these are always kind of fun. Uh, number one. I don't think that's appropriate. I can't ask that one. <laughs> what's the, what's the most embarrassing or worst thing your parents ever caught you doing? Um, oh, geez. Uh, <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, this is a good one. Um, I had, <laughs> uh, I used to go ice fishing a lot with, uh, my grandpa and it was, it was like, you know, this is like old school ice fishing, you know, the ice, it wasn't like the ice, the ice houses now that are like super fancy mm, and they got all right. kinds of like you know, luxuries and stuff. It was like, if we had to go to the bathroom, we had to go outside. And mm -hmm. <laughs> I was, I had to go outside and go to the bathroom and he came out not knowing what I was doing. And it, stupid me, I didn't like go around the corner or anything. I was just popping a squat right outside the door. And when he opened the door, like I like panicked and took off running and there was a <laughs> hole drilled outside and my leg went right down it and my pants were still down and it was, oh God, it was just a nightmare. <laughs> oh, that's that's horrible, man. I'm sorry that that happened. <laughs> okay, next question. Have you ever been bitten or attacked by an animal? And if so, why? I was. I was attacked by my friend Josh Peterson's dog, um, and it, which was weird because it was a really nice dog and we used to play with it all the time. But I don't know if I woke it up from a nap or what, but I was walking in front of it and... All of a sudden, it just latched onto my ankle and would not let go. Oh, wow. But it, it didn't end too badly. I just bled a little bit. It wasn't that serious, I guess. <laughs> That's good that it wasn't that serious. All right. Question number three of the final five. Do you have a birthmark? I do not. Okay. I have good. some moles, but no birthmarks at all. <laughs> That's a simple enough answer. Uh Oh, this is a good question. What is the scariest sound you could hear in the middle of the night? Man, 
one that freaked me out big time was when I had a leak in my water heater and I could hear water running. And it was mm. like, it was oddly, like, it doesn't seem like it would be that terrifying. But as a homeowner, you start to think, oh, Jesus, what kind of damage is this going to be? You know, and is it going to get into an electrical system and cause trouble? Mm -hmm. Like, that was pretty freaked out. Otherwise, like, I don't really scare very easily. I like horror movies, so, and I sleep really heavy. So, okay. I mean, it would have to be very loud to even wake me up. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. All right, final question. If human, if humans came with a warning label, what would yours say? Does not think before he speaks. <laughs> <laughs> I just That's fire out thoughts, not thinking about who's listening or what I'm saying. I just let it go. <laughs> but I think that's, that's part of the artist. You know, we're just, we don't really hide anything. We just kind of throw everything out there. Absolutely. Absolutely. That That is uh, true. We all kind of, I think we're all dangerous with that as it is. But artists, they do just kind of splat and whatever, whatever sticks, sticks. Uh, so that's good. All right, man. I posted the, the link to your Facebook page here in my comment sections tonight. But uh, go ahead. I'm going to lay out here for you. This is your time to shine. Tell us where the, we can find you on social media, any kind of artwork that you have available for sale. Do you take commissions? Just do, do it. Give me anything you got. Uh, basically, I just go through uh, Facebook and Instagram. So he posted the Facebook link. And uh, my Instagram handle is at Nicholas Damien Schleife. And that's basically where you can find me. I shut down my regular website just because it wasn't really getting any traffic. You know, it's all social media now anyway. So mm -hmm. go through there. And as far as for sale, uh, basically, I just sell originals. And if you want something, get a hold of me. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Guys, uh, I cannot tell you how blown away I was when 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 Nicholas sh shared this Walter Payton piece, and then that that took me to explore the rest of his art, and he is very talented. You guys know that I love sports artists on this show, and I just love art in general. So having uh, you join me tonight was a real pleasure, sure. I hope that you had a good time, and uh, I, I think had this a needs spectacular time, and it was a great pleasure. Awesome. I think this piece needs to come to Chicago for the National this year. Are you familiar with the National? I'm not. So the National is a traveling sports card show. It's the largest sports card show in America, uh, and it's held once a year. This year, it's going to be in Chicago, uh, July 28th through August 1st. It is a perfect place to display this art, and I think you need to be there doing it. I'm that. not going to lie. I think you're right. <laughs> that is going to have to make it. Awesome. I will uh, I, I will send you an email tomorrow uh, getting you in touch with the right people to maybe make that happen. But uh, this is something that needs to be there. It needs to be seen by the uh, by the sports art loving community and the sport card community. This is beautiful, man. You did a great job on it. Thank you so much, man. It was a pleasure. Awesome. All right, uh, Nicholas, please hang back, hang backstage with me. Everybody else, that's going to do it for this show's uh, the shows this week. I am traveling to South Carolina, where I will be at the South Carolina Comic Con this weekend. Uh, I am, I'm hopefully looking forward to seeing you there if you're in the area. And we're going to do shows live from there from the show floor as well. So please uh, watch for those. They're just going to pop up live. They're not going to be anything scheduled. Watch for those uh, at, from the Comic Con in South Carolina. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, until next week, good night. God bless. We'll see you then.